If we're going to get this Miami Hurricanes offense trending in the right direction in 2023, we've got to settle this quarterback coaching position and figure out what we're going to do. If anything, an offensive coordinator, here's a name to watch. You are locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday. I'm Alex Stano, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus, longtime South Florida sports radio vet and contributor to allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. Let's bring in our good pal, Larry Bluestein, a show favorite does an awesome job covering high school football, college football, AM 560 sports WQAM in Miami. So blue, since we last spoke, Frank Ponce has left Miami. He's taking his coaching talents back mm. to Appalachian State to uh, once again become their offensive coordinator. That's the job that Frank Ponce left to come to Miami. So now Miami, at the very least, they have an opening at quarterbacks, Coach. I have long suspected that there's also going to be an opening soon. Now, Mario works on his timeline, not mine or yours or ours. But I think there's going to be an opening at offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach as well. And a name that I want to talk with you about, and it's someone you know very well, uh, being you know a, an on and off again fixture in this community, and that's James Coley. James Coley did have a stint at Miami under Al Golden as offensive coordinator. He even had a stint under Mario Cristobal at FIU. You know, he's had some high-level jobs, including Georgia, most recently Texas A&M, where he still is right now as their tight ends coach. Heck of a recruiter, okay? Do you think whether it's quarterbacks coach, wide receivers coach, offensive coordinator, or some combination of the three that Miami might be able to or at least looking to bring James Coley home? Well, Alex, you would think so because of the fact that he's a proven commodity, is a great recruiter. Uh, people like him. Uh, you know, no matter who you talk to, no matter where you are, uh, they're going to always speak favorable of him. And, you know, whether, like you said, Georgia, Florida State, yeah. wherever he's been around, uh, you know, over the last decade or so, he's, uh, you know, he's always kind of rung the bell in a, in a positive way and being a South Florida guy and, you know, knowing, <coughs> excuse me, Knowing Mario, uh, knowing, you know, what the expectations are, you know, and and it's like you said, I mean, Mario kind of does, uh, uh, you know, he, he marches to his own drummer and he, he's not going to let anybody dictate. He's not going to let the media dictate. He's not going to let fans and, you know, some times people say that and because when you're a private school you rely on you know donations and, and fundraising and sometimes you get these uh, people who are you know giving a lot to the to the school and then all of a sudden what happens is somebody a fan gets in their head and say hey listen you know, you're wasting your money because they're not getting this guy and they're not getting that guy. And then before you know it, uh, that that donor is talking to, you know, some high high powered people within the athletic department. And they're kind of like almost trying to force to move. Well, that's not happening here because right. Mario has always made it clear that he's his own man. And he's he's thinking, you know, inside his own box. He's not thinking outside the box. He doesn't need to do that. And. Certainly would be a great uh, a great fit. Uh, I don't think even if he came in as a, as the offensive coordinator, um, he could still work with whoever receivers at the same time. And but not only that is you take a look at his situation, uh, you know, of what you know. And this is the one thing that I get the most of. Um, you know, when you're looking at the recruits for the future. Uh, a lot of fans say, who are you selling? I mean, what, what kind of scheme right. are you selling? What kind of offense are you selling? And I'm pretty sure that Mario Cristobal is selling the offense that they have now, the scheme that they have now. So no matter who gets the job, I think that they'll adapt it, you know, to that. Or I think that when he interviews or whatever, if he does, um, 
that's the type of person he's looking for. Someone to come in here and add what they have, but not change what, what you know, what they're trying to, to build. Because, you know, Mario's scheme uh, is not just a, a Coach Gatta scheme. It's something that he's been around for a while. And, and uh, you know, there's – and it's not like only one person in the world believes <laughs> believes in that scheme. So, yeah. So to end, you know, to answer your question, I mean, uh, he's going to take his time and, you know, yeah. and right now while he's looking at recruits, the future kids, and even the kids now that are getting, getting a playbook when they're coming on campus now, or, you know, early on um, are going to be under the understanding that nothing's going to change. Even if uh, a coach changes, the philosophy won't. Does it make it um, too difficult though? If you're, if you're trying to hire, offensive coaches based on a pre-established philosophy and not basically saying hey like you've got a proven track record come in and run the offense you're comfortable with could, could that work to Miami's detriment yeah because you know right now I mean you're selling kids for the future or even the kids who were handed the playbook like I said when they got in in um, you know into school over the last week two weeks, uh, what they're doing is they're trying to establish something that's going to be, you know, ironclad. They don't want, uh, they don't want anything to change in these kids' minds. So for what you're saying mm. is they're going to come in with somebody new and they're going to change things. Eh, I don't know if that'll work because the kids came here for a reason. I mean, obviously the program and the growth, but at the same time, it's a philosophy and you don't want to come into an RPO when you're running a pro set. You don't want to come in, you know, to a program that's going to be 50 50 run pass when all of a sudden somebody else comes in and they're 70 30 run pass. So, um, yeah, it makes a big difference. And I and I like I said, it. If he does make the change, and I know everybody's pointing that way because Gaddis hasn't been here and he's not been there, and you're here listening to everybody like that. I think that the person that comes in and interviews for the job has to be of that understanding that, it, you know, we're going to use your experience, but at the same time, this is what we're doing. You know, we're we're running this offense, and and this is an offense that I think fits the kids that we have. And the offensive coordinator coming in is going to have to adapt to that. So we don't expect like Cliff Kingsbury, who runs an air <laughs> raid, to say, you know what, I'm over here in Thailand chilling, but let, let, let me fly back from Bangkok yeah. and interview for this OC job. Yeah, that wouldn't work too well, especially with the running game that they're putting together, and a stellar running game, and the kids that come back from last year and looking ahead at some of the backs and with Fletcher, and they had a great picture that I, I had a chance to see them. Uh, Clinton Portis was one of the coaches at this. Uh, we'll talk in a little while about the uh, yeah. battle seven on seven. And um, they posed for a picture and it looked like uh, like uh, Fletcher was his older brother. I He's mean, huge. that's how big he was. I saw that photo. It was amazing. <laughs> Unfreaking believable. And yet we do have a lot. I want to talk with Larry Bluestein about from battle seven on seven. Blue was also in an event uh, at Bradenton on Sunday. He's very well traveled around the state of Florida, as you guys know. Uh, meanwhile, there's a couple of transfer names I want to talk about getting a lot of positive vibes on Tyler Harrell. The wide receiver transferring from Alabama, but he's a South Florida kid. He started his college career at Louisville before transferring to Bama. He's a grad transfer now. Also, I think that a cornerback who I Dono balled to Miami weeks ago might finally uh, be ready to make his decision. I think he's making that later on today. So you guys want to keep it locked right here to Locked on Canes. And folks, if you're a hiring manager or a small business owner, you know how important it is to surround yourself with the right people. Success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. With LinkedIn Jobs, you can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have the skills, values, and experiences to help you achieve your goals. Folks, I've gotten jobs through LinkedIn Jobs before, so I know it works on both ends. If you're hiring or if you're looking for jobs, LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to your open jobs with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. 
Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. Alex Dono alongside the man, the myth, the legend, Larry Bluestein. So, Blue, a player I figure you covered uh, in high school, uh, Tyler Harrell. A South Florida kid who got away. Coming out of Columbus a few years back, he went to Louisville. He transferred to Alabama. There were very high hopes for him at Bama last year, but his season was derailed by a lower body injury. And to my understanding and my hope, he's recovering from that. He's going to be recovered from that fully. He's giving Miami a look. Uh, He's a Columbus high school guy, just like Mario Cristobal. I've been getting good vibes about Miami's chances for Tyler Harrell. What can you tell people about this wide receiver? Dynamic player, and I remember when he uh, came out of uh, Columbus, I believe it was back 2018, and we had talked about him going to Louisville and what a great fit he was, you know, in the scheme that they had at the time. And you're looking four years back, uh, you know, with uh, when Satterfield just arrived there and Frank Ponce was <laughs> on staff as well. And, right. I mean, it's a kid that really, when you take a look at, I mean, he, you know, he's a playmaker. I mean, you know, he's a good, good looking kid at six foot, maybe about 165, close to 170. Um, And like you said, I believe if he didn't get hurt last year, he was still in the mix. I mean, he he was a guy that uh, certainly, you know, the the one the next man up situation at Alabama. I mean, if there's always somebody waiting to take your spot and I'm sure that's what happened, you know, at that situation, because like I said, he was really highly regarded, came there because of the fact that. you know, that that Nick Saban and a lot of the coaches over there really liked him a lot. So, yeah, I, I, I think he's a guy that, uh, you know, I mean, obviously and, answered the, the portal because Miami has an opportunity. I mean, you know, because uh, Alabama's got, what, a ton and a half kids coming in. Um, you know, but he, he – uh, and I know when they got him – uh, you know, at the beginning, you know, especially playing in the, you know, in the SEC, you know, after playing in the ACC, his, you know, his expectations were really high. And, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, you know, when you get injured, um, you know, kind of sets people back, especially at Al- Al- at Alabama. So uh, I think he comes aboard, you know, and then when you, especially when you look at, at, you know, I mean, and it's, it's, Listen, Miami's had two guys over the last three years, especially when you take a look at a kid like Rambo, uh, who was that Oklahoma receiving room was one of the best in the nation. And that sometimes yeah. it just happens like that. And I, I think he comes in here, he get, he has the experience, and I think he, he kind of lifts the entire uh, receiving core up. Yeah, no, very, very well said. So another transfer player that – Uh, I am expecting Miami to land. He's going to be announcing later on today. He had, uh, from what I understand, a a great visit at Miami a few weeks ago. Uh, Cornerback Terry Roberts from Iowa, who was a standout corner in the Big Ten, also an excellent special teams player. And Blue, the reason why I've been confident for weeks in Roberts coming to Miami was we did an episode a few weeks ago where we talked about him and his father, Terry Sr., showed up in our live chat and was telling me his son wants to be a cane. So I'm like, all right, if dad is saying that, I'm believing it. And and I think that uh, I'm expecting him to drop a favorable announcement for Miami today. And, you know, obviously, uh, you know, one of the uh, one of the core. His name will not be spoken, but one of the corners Miami thought they were getting as a true freshman will be going elsewhere. So, you know, and you you need veterans at that position. And Roberts is a veteran. Have you had a chance to watch Terry Roberts Jr. play? Yeah, I have. In fact, when he came out of Cathedral Prep in Erie, Pennsylvania back in 2018, he was one of the kids that we kind of watched. You know, he had a lot of schools looking at him, Michigan, Michigan State. I know Wisconsin looked at him, Penn State, obviously, being in a home state school. And here's the guy, too. He's like about 5'10", close to 190 now, thick kid, um, an opportunity to, to come in and make a huge impact because he's got the experience. He's done some really, really good things. And you know, I, I mean, I like him a lot. I, I think he is a big fit for Miami. And, you know, you take a look at some of the kids that Miami is looking at. I think he fits right in that, you know, that mold of a player who's, uh, uh, you know, well thought of uh, by his teammates, by his coaches, by administration. Uh, but at the same time, somebody can come in and, and make a difference on the football field. And, you know, it, nowadays, um you know, when you, when you recruit well, and Iowa obviously has been recruiting well, you bring in other guys and, and uh, some of these guys believe and, and, and maybe in Terry Roberts, 
um, case, it believes that, hey, listen, you know, I mean, I could go somewhere else and make an immediate impact. And, you know, I mean, I, you know, I fell behind here, but um, no, I like them. I watched them a couple of times on film when I heard Miami was, you know, pursuing them. I, I watched them a lot more and um, definitely somebody Miami could use on this roster. Yeah, no question about that. Uh, I also I want to ask you about the quarterback position, Blue, because something else that happened since you and I last spoke on the show was Jake Garcia entering the transfer portal. Um, shouldn't have come as such a big shocker, um, considering you know when the season was over, I was thinking, like, why would he even want to stay here, go somewhere else, get the opportunity to play? He's on his way to Mizzou, uh, which I did not expect. Yeah. Uh, but so at the moment, Miami's down to three scholarship quarterbacks. Tyler Van Dyke, the expected starter. Sure. Jakari Brown, who got some playing time as a true freshman last year, had some ups and downs. Uh, Emery Williams, true freshman coming in. So my question to you would be, do you think Jakari Brown is ready to be the full-time number two quarterback? Or does Miami need to bring in a veteran for some competition in the portal? Do you think they need to add someone into that quarterback room? Well, you can never have enough quarterbacks. And, and, yeah. and you know, what, no matter what the thinking is here, you have an opportunity, if you can, bring in somebody of a veteran type of guy who maybe has a year or two left. And it's not really a threat. And these people have to understand. The fans make a big deal of, of it. You know, oh, they don't think much of this guy because they're bringing in somebody else. And that's not necessarily true. If you remember, what, they were down to just one scholarship running back uh, at, at one point this past year you're having to use a walk on so it's no shame in getting as much talent as you can a lot of people would like to come here because they understand that you're one play away from you know being in the mix yeah i mean last year tyler van dyke you know with his injuries and then before you know it they they were using um a brown who was a freshman and they were using a guy like jake garcia uh, extensively and um so no, I think they'll bring in somebody else. And and it's no cut to, to you know, to anybody that's there, Emery or, you know, Brown. But uh, you, you've got to kind of look out for yourself. And I think Miami would be benefiting that program, uh, you know, by bringing in, in another body into that, you know, room. No matter who it is, it's just somebody with experience that's going to give them an opportunity to to get those kids like Brown and, and also uh, – I mean, uh, whoever comes in over the next couple of years, an opportunity to learn, especially in, in Emory's case now. We're joined here by the legend Larry Bluestein, South Florida high school sports guru, 560 WQAM, the six ring cane show. Uh, when we come back, so Miami has been crystal balled for one of the top wide receivers in the class of 2024. I've got to get Blue's insight uh, before we get to that, folks. I, I want to send some thank yous out here because uh, I've asked you guys, hey, if you can do us a solid, leave us a five-star review, Apple Podcasts or Spotify. I want to send you guys some shout outs for doing that because I, I don't ask for too much and it's free. If you want to leave us a five-star rating and a nice review, absolutely free, obviously, to do that. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your pods. And some of the recent reviews we've gotten, uh, I want to say huge thanks to a user who it was basically like he smashed the keyboard with a bunch of different letters. So I'll just call him DGH. It's like the whole alphabet soup there. Thanks to DGH. Thanks to Hest79. Thanks to Polk Kane, who I, I know you're great on Twitter. I see you all the time, Polk. Uh, thanks to the U. That's what that user is called. Thank you to Kane's Fan Ivy. Thank you to Ra Kane's 14. Thank you, Romstead. Thank you, Mr. Fantasy. Thank you, Dollfan5. Thank you, BAP24. And thank you, Kane Fan Dan, uh, for leaving me uh, five star reviews on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And if I missed anybody, let me know. We'll throw some more shout outs next time around. But got to talk about JoJo Trader with Larry Bluestein next here on Locked on Canes. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. So, Blue, five star, class of 24, standout, Shamanad Madonna, wide receiver, JoJo Trader. Uh, had apparently a nice visit down to Miami because he has been crystal balled by Steve Wiltfong, who's rarely wrong. Uh, it is early in the process, though, here for these 2024s. But JoJo Trader has been crystal balled to Miami. That's despite the fact that his teammate, who I know Miami would also love to have, Jeremiah mm -hmm. Smith, has already verbally committed to Ohio, Ohio State. Miami would love to flip him and get them both. But what can you tell our listeners about JoJo Trader from Chaminade? 
Yeah, uh, I think we saw him for the first time two years ago when he played at Miami Central in the state title game playing just one play on defense, just one play on the defensive side, intercepted a ball and went 95 yards for a touchdown. Dynamic football talent, really good kid. Started at Monsignor Pace with Jeremiah. You see, you, yeah. you people don't realize that these kids transfer to the point where you forget where they started from. And, and you know, uh, he's he's – he and Jeremiah have always been really close and the fact that they like playing with each other and they like playing on, you know, in the same scheme with each other, but uh, definite difference maker, big time kid, you get him in the class. And, you know, and on the other hand with Jeremiah, you can't be upset because Ohio States has a good track record of getting kids, putting them in the NFL. I know that they've even offered Malachi uh, Tony, the freshman, the sophomore to be at American Heritage, trying to keep that uh, train rolling. But Miami's at that level now where they're going to be able to get some kids like that. And um, and certainly if they if they got him coming in for the, the next wave of class, uh, and especially uh, a kid who's a producer, um, no, he's big time. I mean, he's a upper elite kid. You know, he's that, that Francis Mauer go of a wide receiver type kid. Showed that he could play on the defensive side of the ball. Good special teams uh, player. Yeah, to total win-win there. You know, it's funny. You brought up Brian Hartline at Ohio State. I get at <laughs> least one question a week where someone's like, Dono, how come Mario doesn't just hire Brian Hartline to be the offensive coordinator? Well, listen, he's having a great time at his alma mater at Ohio yeah. State. And they yeah. recently gave him a promotion and he passed up the chance to be the head coach at Cincinnati to stay at Ohio State. Yeah. He's become the OC there now as well. So, unfortunately, Brian Hartline, he's not coming to Miami to be the offensive coordinator. But people ask me about it every week. I'd love to have him because the guy is an incredible recruiter, especially at that position at wide receiver. But, yeah, it, it's not going to happen. Um, so, let, let's talk a little bit, Blue. You were out at Battle Miami on Saturday you were at an event in Bradenton on Sunday. Uh, tell me a little bit about who and what stood out from those events, because I'm kicking myself. I had a family vacation scheduled, so I, I couldn't be at battle. I, I was missing out on that. Well, the battle thing was really good. They had 100 teams from across the country, you know, smaller kids, you know, like 10 and under, all the way up to high school level uh, players. And they came from Arizona and they came from New York State and California, even uh, Bishop Gorman's quarterback and the receiver were there playing actually for a South Florida team, a team that was in the finals. Um a lot of talent. I mean, you know, I mean, no doubt. I mean, no matter where you look, I mean, there's going to be elite kids and some of the next uh, group of players like a Jeremiah Smith and those those type of kids, uh, you know, had an opportunity to show what they could do, uh, you know, with their respective teams. But uh, a lot of the teams like the Fire and the and the Express and the Immortals and the new Raw team uh, that did an excellent job. And then, uh, you know, I mean, that's what you have. Uh, in an event like that. And uh, Chris Serco, who's the president and CEO of Battle, uh, which we had on our radio station, our show last week. Uh, good dude. It, it really, excited. he and Jimmy Smith, have they worked so hard to get this thing in, in, in and it's an elite opportunity for kids, people in South Florida to see elite talent from the entire country uh, right here in, in, you know, in Fort Lauderdale. They played it at Mills Pond Park, uh, which is right there off of Oakland Park Boulevard. Um, I mean, you, and then you had some, you know, guys like Clinton Porter show up. He's, he's coaching a team, I believe, out of the Carolinas. And, and uh, Xavier Restrepo, who happened wow. uh, to, uh, to be coaching his, his younger brother's team, which uh, won the, uh, the, the national title. How old is um, the brother? Can we can we get him in for a visit? I think uh, he's he, he might be like 20, 30 something. So Oh, get get him an all oh, he'll come in with my kid. Yeah, exactly. He's probably <laughs> the same age as your son is. And uh <laughs> But it's neat. It's neat to watch these guys. Uh, the coaches come out, high school football players. Obviously, college ca coaches can't come out. I remember the one year uh, that Jimbo Fisher was out there, but that's because his son played quarterback for one of the teams. That's so right. it's kind of like, you know, he was allowed out there as a father. Uh, like he wasn't really scouting, yeah. right? I mean, he. I think <laughs> I remember him sitting under a tent. He, watching he probably had that kid on purpose. Well, I'm saying he probably, he was under a tent 
watching everybody but his son. So yeah, it's yeah, it's good. It really is. And then we had the um, um, uh, a tournament yesterday for the prep red zone. Um, it's a rising tournament where you had a lot of 26 and 25 kids. You know, kids are going to be sophomores. Kids are going to be juniors. Um, a couple of really, really good uh, football players, uh, Charleston Floyd from uh, Pensacola, who, uh, I, you know, I put a couple of coaches on already. This uh, kid's a sophomore, uh, going to be a junior defensive back, a big, big, big time kid. It's already getting a lot of looks. Um, yeah, I mean, you had really good football talent, and I was really pleasantly surprised that, uh, uh, you know, that they had so many really gifted kids, tight ends. Uh, they had good receivers. They had outstanding quarterbacks, which really uh, were really surprising. But, uh, yeah, good good time. See, and that's what we'll see now all the way up until uh, um, spring is you're going to get seven-on-sevens. You're going to get combines. Um Pretty soon, the Under Armour Combine will be coming up in the Nike Combine, which, to me, they, they showcase the elite kids. And there's guys there that you pretty much know about. To me, I'd much rather go to an event where a kid will come. A lot of people don't know about him, but he emerges. Like when we saw Emery Williams, uh, a lot of people never knew anything about him. And here he is showing up at a showcase at Florida State where there was something like 1,500 other kids. See, to me, I pride myself on going to those events you know, it's easy to go to a, a battle or it's easy to go to an Under Armour or a Nike a combine because, you know, they only invite, invite the four or five star kids. Right. But it, it's better to go to these little showcases where these kids are, you know, looking to improve, you know, to prove themselves and certainly got that. And, um, you know, a couple of kids at the, uh, the, the prep red zone thing up at IMG um, – Got an opportunity because there was a couple of good scouts there, former college coaches. Art Still uh, was there. Our coach Ken Still was there. And they had, a, a, you know, a lot of guys who have some influence. And uh, those are the things that I really like to go to in the offseason. I like it. And I know I know the, the kids appreciate it because I can't tell you how many – players I've talked to or players that I see tag blue on social media that they, you know, appreciate the fact that he's out there scouting these players, watching these players when a lot of others don't. So blue, thanks for doing that. Thank you for all the stuff you do in the community. So make Thank sure you, you catch Larry Bluestein weekly on 560 WQAM on the South Florida high school sports show. What's the schedule like this week, blue Thursday, six to eight, uh, going to have some pretty good, uh, we're going to talk a little bit, uh, coach McIntyre from FIU is going to join us talk a little bit bit about that but we try to get the college coaches on after the second signing day because then they could talk about yeah. the kids and but coach Mack wanted to come on and uh, we've had him on a few times and he's a really good guy in the community and uh, you know hopefully he could turn things around and using a lot of our players that don't go to Miami but uh, guys that uh, still are want to play D D1 and you know I mean and they had a really big class in the first go around and uh, he'll be joining us we'll have a couple of new high school coaches in the area that'll be joining us as well so you know it's exciting and especially the month of february month of march and into april are our best shows because we get to get college coaches from around the country so i'm excited about that that's well said larry bluestein make sure you follow him on twitter at larry bluestein thank you so much blue enjoy the rest of your week you too alex thank you and guys, make sure after you make Locked on Canes your first listen, for your second listen, check out our brand new podcast, Locked on College Basketball. Experts Isaac Shade and Andy Patton bring you everything you need to know on and off the court. Plus, hear from big name experts, coaches, and players throughout the basketball landscape. Locked on College Basketball, available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. We will talk to you again next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.